Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're doing a sponsored video today for Channels, which is a great DVR system that works with the HD home run tuners that we have covered here extensively on the channel. It works with Apple TV, with your iPhone, with your Android device, and Fire TVs. And what we're gonna look at in this video is setting up the Channels DVR server on a Raspberry Pi 4. You can run the whole system off one of these low cost computers and we're going to set it up from scratch in this video. Now I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is a paid sponsorship from Channels and they have reviewed and approved this video before it was uploaded, mostly for accuracy to make sure I got all the steps correct. So let's jump into this now and see how we can get the server running on this Raspberry Pi. Now the folks from Channels have a helpful shopping list of all the different components you need for this project. A Raspberry Pi 4 is the minimum configuration and you just need a two gigabyte Raspberry Pi 4 to get this to work. A power supply, of course, is necessary to keep everything running. Uh, you also should get a case for your Pi and Channels recommends this one. This is the Flerk case. I really like this case. It's really nicely constructed. It's all aluminum and it's passively cooled. So your Raspberry Pi can run 24 seven without overheating, but it can do so silently. So a really nice case and all of five minutes to get your Pi slid in there and up and running. You also need a USB 3.0 hard drive. Uh, these Pis, of course, do have an SD card slot, but you're gonna be storing a lot of video here. So you're gonna need a hard drive to store it all. And a USB 3 hard drive that is self-powered is probably the best way to go here. Now to get started, we're going to need an SD card so that we can configure the Raspberry Pi to boot off of our USB 3 hard drive. So you might need a card reader in order to get that set up and I'm going to now walk you through the process of configuring the Pi to boot from a USB hard drive, and then we'll go ahead and download the server image and get it installed on our hard drive. So let's get to work. Now the first step is to go to the raspberrypi.com homepage and download the Raspberry Pi Imager software. This runs on Windows, Mac, and Linux, and the software will function the same across all of those platforms. So what you see here on my Windows computer is what it'll look like on the Mac and Linux. And once you have that software downloaded, you're going to need to install it. You're also going to need to attach your card reader to your computer if it doesn't already have a card reader. And you're going to want to get a SD card that you can erase to transfer the configuration to the Raspberry Pi. So this card can be erased and I'm going to stick it in my card reader right now. And now I'm gonna load up that imager software and get the configuration moved over. So let's get to that. So we have the Raspberry Pi imager installed. I'm now going to run it here and you will see this message when you first load it up. We have to give the application some permissions to write to the disk. I'm going to say yes to that and then you'll be brought to this screen. Now the first step here is to choose an operating system. Now normally you would be selecting the Raspberry Pi OS, which is the default. But what we're gonna do instead is go over here to miscellaneous utility images. And we're going to go over here to bootloader. And these images will instruct the Raspberry Pi how to boot itself up. Now we could go with this one called SD card boot. And what this does is it looks for an SD card in the SD card slot. If it finds one, it boots from that. If it doesn't, it will boot from USB. There's one that works in the opposite direction where if it sees a USB hard drive attached, it boots from that. Otherwise, it goes to the SD card. And then there's one to boot off the network, which we're not gonna do. Either one of these will work, but I'm gonna go with the USB one here just because I always want this device to boot from the hard drive. And if I happen to leave a card in, I don't want it to choose that instead. Now the next step is to copy this bootloader over to the SD card. And this is gonna wipe out whatever is on this card. So if you have pictures or something important on it, copy them off and get them to a safe place because this card is going to be wiped out when we initiate this. And another tip I have for you is to detach any other external storage that is attached to your computer so you don't accidentally select the wrong drive and erase it. This is a very destructive process here, so we really wanna be safe. So with that out of the way, and with this uh, SD card reader being the only thing that I currently have installed in my computer, I'm going to go over here to choose storage and select that device, and that's the one that I know is uh, pointing at this SD card. And now I'm going to go here to write 
and what this is going to do is write out that bootloader. Now this shouldn't take very long at all. When it's done, you might see your Windows computer pop up some additional windows and say it can't read a drive. Just cancel out all of that stuff and go over here to click continue back on the Raspberry Pi imager screen. And now it is safe for us to take this card out and put it in our Raspberry Pi. So let's do that now, and then we'll get the hard drive ready. All right, I've taken the SD card out of the SD card reader and put it in the Raspberry Pi's SD card slot. I'm now going to apply power to the Raspberry Pi, and you'll see its lights light up here on the side. And what we wanna wait for here is for the green light to start blinking rapidly like it is here. And that means that we've successfully uh, updated the bootloader on the Pi, and we're able now to move on to the next step, which is getting the hard drive ready to boot up into our server. Now, our next step is to head over to the Raspberry Pi section on the channel's website. And what you'll find as you scroll down here is that handy shopping list we found earlier, but also an option here to download the image that we need to write to the hard drive. So click on that image and download it. All right, so that server image is now sitting in my downloads folder. And the next step is to get the hard drive connected to the PC, which we're gonna do now. So I'm gonna get this USB cable plugged in the right way this time. There we go. And now we're gonna go back to that Pi Imager software that we ran before on the Pi's SD card. And this time what I'm gonna do is click on Choose OS once again. But instead of all these other options, we're going to go over here to Custom. And in my Downloads folder, which it defaulted to, we are going to see that it found the channel's DVR server. I'm going to click Open here. Now the next step is to select our external hard drive. And like before, you want to be careful here because this is going to erase the drive. So we're going to go here to Choose Storage. And here is the hard drive, a nice big eight terabyte drive that I've got connected here. And the next step, just like before, is to write it out. And remember, this is going to erase this hard drive. So remember, back up and copy everything and then you can write to it, which is what we are doing now. All right, so it is done writing the image to the hard drive. We're gonna click continue here and now I'm going to detach the hard drive from the computer and we're gonna start plugging stuff into the Raspberry Pi. Of note here is that we're not going to need to plug in a display or a keyboard because this doesn't require a display or a keyboard. So you can just boot it right up and have everything working uh, just with uh, the device plugged into your network. So I'm gonna plug the hard drive into one of the blue USB 3 ports on the Pi uh, these two ports here are slower USB 2 ports. The other thing I'm going to connect is my Ethernet cable. This requires a hardwired Ethernet connection. Although the Raspberry Pi 4 supports Wi-Fi, the channel server does not. So you will need to have it connected to your network. But if you are using an HD Home Run tuner, those are hardwired as well. And like the HD Home Run tuners, the server here can be placed anywhere on the network. So you can plug it in right next to your router if that's the easiest thing to do. And everything will get detected automatically. So the server will find the tuners and your clients will find the server. Now that we have everything ready to go here, I'm going to take out the SD card that we installed earlier for the bootloader. We're not going to need that anymore. And we're going to plug in the power supply here. And like before, we're gonna keep an eye on these lights because this will indicate uh, when the server is up and running. So initially, you'll see those lights blink a little bit and then they will turn solid. So if you have a solid green light here, uh, that will indicate that your server is booted like we have now. The next thing you're gonna do is go back to your computer and load up a web browser. And you're gonna type in the address that you see here on screen, dvr-server. And when you do that, it's going to take you to the Raspberry Pi server here on your local network. And you can log into your channel's account here to get started. I'm going to connect my channel's account now. And when we're done, I'll show you what happens next. All right, so our channel's DVR server is now up and running on our Pi and hard drive combo here. And if I go into the home page, uh, you'll see that it also found my HD Home Run Tuner, but I do have to connect the channel guide to it. So what we're going to do here to get 
our DVR functional is click on this plus icon here, and I'm going to type in my zip code now so that I can get the guide data prepped so I can use this to record live television. Let me do that and we'll see what happens when it's done. All right, so now that I've typed in my zip code, it's asking me what uh, channel lineup it should be matching to. And because I have an HD Home Run Prime that works with my cable subscription, I'm going to select Comcast, but you will likely be using local over the air if you're using an over the air HD Home Run tuner. I'm going to select that and click on Save here. And now we've got that uh, channel guide assigned and we should be able to start making use of our new DVR server. All right, so I've got the Channels app here running on my iPhone, and if I go over to Settings now, you can see that the Channels Plus is enabled and it detected our Raspberry Pi server with all of its terabytes of storage that's available. So we're good to go there. And what I can do now is start browsing through some of the stuff that's currently on television. I wanna maybe catch the end of the show a little bit later, so I'm going to click on Record here. And now my Raspberry Pi server is going to record what's left of this show. And if we jump back to my computer and look at the web-based control panel from the Raspberry Pi, we can see that it is recording something from channel 1003. And maybe I wanna record something else because I have three tuners on this device. So I'm gonna go over here to Wild Kratz and record the rest of that. Uh, so that one is good to go. And what we'll do now is see uh, that the server is reporting that it's recording both of these shows at the same time. So let's take a look and see if playback works now that we've recorded a couple of things. We'll go back to my iPhone here. I'll go over to the library and you can see the Wild Kratz and the new show have both been recorded. I'm going to go ahead and watch the new show and I can have it resume from where I last left off because of course this supports bookmarking. Let me just get the display oriented here and we've got good video playback. And this is on my local network, so it's playing back with the original recording resolution. If I was not at home, the Raspberry Pi does have a built-in hardware transcoder, and that should be good enough to allow one transcoded stream to go at a time in high definition. So it will work for individual playback, but if you want to have multiple people watching remotely, you'll probably want a more robust server, but this works quite well on the local network because it's just passing files over. And this is the original recording that came in off the air. I can skip ahead here very quickly, just like I could do on a more robust server. And of course, this is working great on the phone, but it will also work the same on a TV-based client too. So there you go. You can see just how easy it is to turn a Raspberry Pi into a full-featured Channels DVR server. I want to thank Channels for their support of the channel, and I want to thank you all for tuning in. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Jim Tannis and Tom Albrecht, Hot Sauce and Video Games and Eric's Variety Channel, Brian Parker and Frank Goldman, Amda Brown and Matt Zagaya, and Chris Allegretta. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. Don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.